Hi there, I'm Justin Pritchard for Driving.ca. This is the Ford Bronco Sport Badlands, and in this video, you're along for the ride with me as we drive, film, and test this machine for TV and web right here in Northern Ontario. You shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but still, the first thing I thought of when I ever saw one of these on the road was that it might be a pretty sort of rough and noisy and truck-like machine. After all, the Ford Bronco Sport has quite a boxy shape, which of course helps maximize interior volume, but also usually wind noise. My tester came with these chunky off-road tires, which also usually make me think tire noise. And given that Ford's built adventure-ready capability into this machine that's designed to help launch the new Bronco sub-brand of outdoor adventure vehicles that Canadians are buying like crazy these days, I figured this would be heavy on the truck side, more rugged and tough than smooth and comfortable. So I guess my biggest surprise about the Ford Bronco Sport Badlands is how it drives, which is to say better than I was expecting on more surfaces than I was expecting, and it gets better the harder you work it in some situations too. Bronco Sport Badlands does some of its best work on the sort of badly maintained back roads and rough trails that its owners will be tempted to explore. These are the exact surfaces that tend to see ride quality in an average crossover designed primarily for on-road use take a serious hit. Simply, the ride in my Bronco Sport Badlands tester often feels optimized to handle rough and challenging surfaces with a feeling that's rugged and durable, and it feels like it can take a rough surface pounding without breaking much of a sweat. In fact, the suspension here is pretty remarkable stuff. Even on an aggressive mogul surface, there's plenty of travel and a well-controlled feel. The Bronco bounces, but it's not dramatic and overwhelming. It moves very nicely over its suspension and wheels when the going gets rough. Job nicely done here, and that's important for the shoppers buying these things who expect to be able to go bashing down new trails without it sounding or feeling like they're breaking anything. This shopper wants to feel like they're driving something that can handle whatever they want to try, and I think they've pretty much got that dialed in with this machine. It's always more fun to go exploring when your ride doesn't sound like it's about to cough up a strut, after all. And while its tall stance and clearance mean it's not the ultimate corner carver for the dollar, it is a comfortable highway ride and a relatively quiet one if you keep near the speed limit. Point is, despite its serious off-roading intentions, the drive here feels nicely dialed in for consistent comfort, whether you're commuting, off-roading, or just going to get some milk at the store. Note that my tester is the high-capability Badlands model, complete with an exclusive suspension system, so these comments may not apply to other versions of the Bronco Sport. If you got much longer legs than me, you'll be sort of running out of room there, maybe, but otherwise, even the headroom back here is not bad. We can see the bulkhead for the sunroof here is actually directly above that area where no one's sitting. So we've got tons of headroom here, tons of headroom behind us. Uh, I'd say no issue with space back here. If you do have longer legs, that is gonna be the dimension that starts running out for you uh, the most quickly. The two liter turbo engine made 250 horsepower and 277 pounds of torque, all quietly and smoothly enough that you hardly notice the engine running during gentle driving. That's the second surprise I had here. Like the feel to the ride and drive, the engine and powertrain feel smooth and strong and nicely calibrated to just do their thing in the background without demanding any of your attention. Power output seems more than adequate in an unloaded vehicle and even when you work it hard, the engine doesn't sound stressed out. Further down below, look for skid plates, nearly 9 inches of ground clearance, and a high-tech new twin-clutch all-wheel drive system with both center and rear differential lock functionality available at a button press to give drivers additional control over how Bronco powers its wheels in challenging situations. Though novice off-roaders may not need these features early on, they do come in handy as you grow into your machine's capability, build your confidence, and explore more challenging terrain. The tough and rugged off-road tires, underbody skid plating, and even non-painted lower bumpers help reduce worry about damage or wear or scratching as you get out to explore. When I see a vehicle with skid plating and proper off-road tires like these Falcon Wild Peaks, 
I think that's two less things to worry about on the road less traveled. And less time worrying means more time enjoying the drive. Ford's so-called GOAT modes help here too, that means go over any terrain by the way, to help optimize your current traction situation. GOAT modes, and this is our electronic toolkit, gives us access to everything the Bronco Sport Badlands can do in terms of off-road support technology. Slippery, sport, eco, normal, mud ruts, we've got one mode for sand there and another one for rock crawl. In sand mode, the revs stay up and the transmission avoids shifting to help maintain your forward momentum. In slippery mode, throttle response is reduced and the torque split between the axles is more even, that provides more sure-footed grip. Or set it to normal mode and let the system call the shots. So here we have an off-road optimized crossover with an impressive engine and a nicely dialed in ride relative to how it's intended to be used. And it all works to create a vehicle that feels right at home on the sort of surfaces it was designed for. Inside, some interesting touches combine with some old favorites to create a handy place to take it all in. There's the latest Ford Sync system front and center. Of all the systems I try like this, it's my favorite because it's very easy to learn, very easy to use, and I don't think I've ever had to swear at it. And just below that central screen, it's the start of the Bronco's comprehensive array of at-hand storage facilities. So a look at what I would call the at-hand storage in here, and that is the little cubbies and nooks and crannies that help you keep all of the smaller items that you want to keep organized on the go, organized on the go. Nice cubby there for your wallet, wireless recharging pad for your phone if you're uh, equipped, otherwise there are some charging ports and power outlets there as well. Perfect little spot for your COVID mask. Cup holders of course, great place for little GoPro cameras and lens caps in this case. Lots of room in the center console for your charge cables, hand sanitizer, two more power outlets in there. They've even closed off the openings in the bottom of the interior door handles for your coffee change. And the seats have these handy zippered pouches, cushioned deeply and fabric lined to protect your laptop or tablet while keeping the dust out. There's no problem staying organized and tidy and recharged on the go here. In back, tough rubberized coverings protect the seat backs and floor from wear and tear and make for easier cleaning up after a wet golden retriever trip to the beach. If you're a dog person, it's a great setup, just be conscious of the jump in height, as the added ground clearance on the Bronco Sport Badlands does mean a higher jump in height for the canine which could cause an issue for smaller dogs. You can open the tailgate glass by itself or choose tailgate shade for the beach and the bush. Overhead LED lighting can be aimed and adjusted for whatever you're up to, turned on and off with a switch. Nearby, more power outlets, including household power, and this folding, sliding, leg-supported shelf adds more flexibility and the ability to easily set things up as a little serving area or workstation. And a full-size spare, which is nice because if you pop one of these tires, uh, having a full-size spare means you can keep on driving and it doesn't necessarily end your trip. Gripes? You've got better choices than this if you want sporty handling or maximum size for your dollar. Further, the suspension does exhibit the odd unbecoming clunk or whack from certain bumps and the driveline, though typically smooth, can turn in the occasional clank or slam when used in severe conditions. And while many of the interior plastics are easy to clean, they won't win over anyone who wants the most luxurious interior materials for their dollar. End of the day, I think if you're primarily after something that's very everyday friendly but also very weekend off-road capable while losing as little as possible in between, you'll find this to be a very compelling package, fitted with plenty of useful tools, tech and touches that you'll enjoy on the daily. I'm Justin Pritchard for Driving.ca, thank you for watching, until next time, take care and drive safe.